This is the third section in the further kinematics chapter, chapter eight, and it's variable acceleration in one dimension. Well, you already know that if your acceleration is constant, you see that where we've got variable acceleration, we need to differentiate and integrate to convert between uh, displacement, uh, velocity and acceleration. So just a reminder, um, if S is our displacement, then we would need to differentiate that. Uh, so that will be ds dt. We, we do all of these with respect to um, time, which is the velocity. And then if you differentiate that again, you'll get either the second derivative of the displacement uh, or the first derivative of the velocity with respect to time, which is the acceleration. Let's go in that way. So if we go back that way, we integrate. And you just need to remember that when you integrate, so for example, when we get here, we would have integrated our acceleration with respect to t, and here we would have integrated our velocity with respect to t that we're going to have our we introduce a plus c now this is exactly the same as what you do in year one the only difference is maybe some of the things you're going to be asked to differentiate and integrate so for example in year one you wouldn't have known how to differentiate or integrate any of the sine x cos x e to the x and i've just put those there as a reminder so we could be using any of the integrations that we've learned in year two um, and applying it to this variable acceleration so a particle is moving in a straight line with acceleration uh, at time t seconds given by this expression here. And the velocity of the particle at time zero is one over two pi. Find the expression for the velocity at time t seconds. Well, if we've got the acceleration equals cos two pi t, uh, that means if we integrate the acceleration with respect to t, that will give us the velocity. Now to integrate um, cos something t, do you remember we would use the reverse chain rule for this? Because if we think of brackets being here, okay, the inside of that bracket is linear. There's no square, there's no cubes, anything like that. So remember, to use the reverse chain rule, we uh, integrate the outside, so cos becomes sine, so the inside doesn't change, and we divide by the inside differentiated, and the inside differentiated is 2 pi, so we divide by 2 pi plus c. So how are we gonna find c? Well, we're gonna use this information here. When t is zero, uh, the v is 1 over 2 pi, so let's substitute that in. So v is 1 over 2 pi when t is 0, so we will put sine 2 pi times 0. Now if we work this out over here, this just becomes sine 0, which is 0. Oh, sorry, I've forgotten the plus c. Here we go, plus c, that's what we're trying to work out. Yeah, this becomes zero, so c equals one over two pi. Our constant is one over two pi. Um, so our final expression for the velocity is one over two pi sine two pi t plus one over two pi. And uh, I suppose we should put the meters, uh, the units in meters per second. Part B, the maximum speed. Now, since we've got sine in here, this part's going to be going up, down, like this, cycling up, down. So we just need to work out what the maximum um, velocity is going to be. We can use that by working out, uh, work it out by looking at this bit here. Now, the maximum that this is going to be is one. So let's write that down. So the maximum of this is going to be one, which means if you times it one by one over two pi, the maximum this is going to be is one over two pi. So the maximum the whole thing is going to be 
is going to be uh, 1 over 2 pi plus 1 over 2 pi which is 2 over 2 pi and that simplifies over here to 1 over pi so that's our maximum so that equals maximum from velocity v max part c the distance traveled in the first three now remember if we've got um a velocity time graph the area under here represents the distance traveled yeah now since we have the velocity with respect to time or we actually have an expression for the velocity if we integrate that um, between the two limits we'll get the distance traveled so um, we want to find the distance traveled in the first three seconds so that's from zero seconds to three seconds zero to three and we're integrating uh, one over two pi sine two pi t plus one over two pi dt now like any integration question we want to try and take any constants over now one over two pi is a common factor so we're going to take that factor over the other side So that just leaves sine 2 pi t plus 1 dt. It's just when you get those um, factors over, it just makes the working a little bit easier to do. So now we're ready to integrate. Now the um, sine 2 pi t, we can integrate using the reverse chain rule. So we integrate the outside, sine becomes negative cos. The inside of the bracket doesn't change. And we divide by the inside um, differentiated, so we divide by 2 pi. And um, then the 1 integrated becomes t. And so now we just want to substitute in the values of uh, 3 and 0 so we're going to have negative 1 over 2 pi cos and then 2 pi times 3 plus 3 minus uh, negative 1 over 2 pi uh, cos don't need a bracket there cos 2 pi times by 0 plus 0 so I'm going to put that on my calculator and see what I get now we need to remember I did put this out the front didn't I yeah so that also means I should have 1 over 2 pi here and then all of this that I've got written down that's all going to get times by 1 over 2 pi now the bit in the bracket works out to be 3, so you've got 1 over 2 pi times 3. Now don't forget, um, your calculator needs to be in radians to do this. Anytime you, you do any type of differentiation or integrate, integration, uh, our angles are in radians. So that's 3 um, over 2 pi. And if we change that to a decimal, uh, 0 0.477464 so 0 0.477 to three significant figures let's just highlight that uh, answer now well, it's distance traveled isn't it so let's put meters there at the end so there we go this uh, the answer to c i suppose you could give it exactly like that if you wanted to b that was the maximum velocity and a here's our expression for the velocity 
particle of mass 6 kg is moving on a positive x-axis. At time t seconds, the displacement s of the particle is given by that. OK, so this expression uh, here is our displacement. Uh, find the velocity of the particle when uh, uh, when t equals 1.5 seconds. So the first thing we need to do is to actually work out uh, what the expression for the velocity is before we substitute in 1.5. So actually s equals 2t to power 3 over 2. I'm going to write the, the second bit as a third e to the negative 2t. So our velocity is going to be the displacement integrate uh, differentiate with respect to t. So v is going to equal so um, two times three over two is three. Three t take one away from the power, so we got half. And then to um, differentiate the next bit. So basically got a third times by e to the minus 2t uh, differentiated, which is going to be um, negative 2 times by, so basically the power differentiated, we're using like the chain rule again, e to the negative 2t. So just a reminder that if you're differentiating, um, if y equals e to the f of x, dy dx equals f dash of x times by e to the f of x. So we're using that to uh, differentiate it. I suppose we can tidy it up a bit. So we get v equals 3t squared. That doesn't change. And then minus 2 thirds e to the minus 2t. Remember, there's no plus c because we're differentiating, not integrating. So that gives us the expression for um, the velocity. So now we just need to substitute in uh, t equals 1.5. So at t equals 1.5, the velocity is going to equal 3 times 1.5 to the power half minus 2 thirds e to the power minus 2 times 1.5. So let's work that out and see what we get. And that gives me 3.64104, blah, blah, blah. So three significant figures, 3.64. So 3.64 uh, as usual to our three significant figures. And that is the uh, velocity at that time. Part B. Given that the particle is acted on by a single force, I wondered why we were given the mass. Um, of variable magnitude f which acts in the direction of the positive axis find the value of f when t equals 2. So this is going to be an f equals ma question. Force equals mass times acceleration. Um, so f is what we need to find. Uh, we've got the mass at 6 kg. What we're missing is the acceleration. Now to get that, we're going to differentiate our velocity to get our acceleration. So we take our um, expression for the uh, velocity, which is here. So that's going to be 3 over 2 t to the power negative a half. Then we've got minus two thirds, that's like the uh, multiple. And then we're going to differentiate this again. So then it's going to be multiplying by negative two e to the minus two t. So all of that just gives us the three over two t to the minus half. Um, and then we get plus four over three e to the minus 2t. We need to put in um, t equals 2. So at t equals 2, that will give us an acceleration of 3 over 2 
times by 2 to the power negative a half plus 4 over 3 e to the power minus 2 times 2. Let's see what that gives us for the acceleration on the calculator. And I get 1.085081. So um, that force now we're ready to work it out is going to be six times that number, the 1.085. So if I just take that and times it by six, I want the answer exact. So that gives me a force of three significant figures, 6.51. Newtons. So let's highlight our answers. Part A was here, and part B, final answer down there for our force, is there. Right, you should now be able to do exercise 8C on pages 168 to 170 of the textbook.